On the 14th of May, a racist attack at a supermarket in Buffalo, New York, snatched the life of 10 people and left three more injured. The shooter live-streamed part of the attack on Twitch. The perpetrator was 18-year-old Peyton Gendron. At the time, it was believed to be 2022's deadliest mass shooting in the United States, which sent the whole nation into a state of shock. On the same date, another boy from Texas named Salvador Ramos sent a private Instagram message to his friend, reading, 10 more days. His friend replied, Are you going to shoot up a school or something? He replied, No, stop asking dumb questions. You'll see. And 10 days later, Salvador was ready to commit one of the most heinous and sickening acts imaginable. Who was Salvador Ramos? What were the reasons behind his actions? And what were the consequences of this heart-wrenching event? I am Visca and you're watching Crimeverse. This is the case of Salvador Ramos. Salvador Ramos was born on the 16th of May 2004 in North Dakota. He was a native of Uvalde and a former student at Uvalde High School. Later, he worked part-time at a Wendy's restaurant. He came from a broken family and was described as lonely, disturbed and weird. His parents were divorced and both of them had criminal records. In the year 2000, his father, Salvador Ramos Sr., was sentenced to 180 days in jail for resisting arrest and 11 years later he was slapped with a felony charge of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. A year later he was sentenced to 30 days in jail for striking a man with a beer bottle. On the other hand, his mother Adriana Martinez was also sentenced to 180 days in jail for writing a bad check in the year 2005 and two years later she allegedly caused bodily harm to a family member. However, the case was dropped and records show she had to enroll in anger management counseling. Salvador had a rough relationship with his mother and in March 2022, he was kicked out of his mother's house. He was a loner and with almost no friends, he ended up moving in with his maternal grandmother. His grandmother, Celia Martinez Gonzalez, was also charged with a minor crime and was sentenced to two years of probation back in 1993. And yada yada, you get the picture, right? The environment was not great. Salvador also had an older sister named Marisabel Ramos, who's 21. She is currently serving in the United States Navy. In the earlier years, Salvador was described as being a nice and shy kid. But he would often get bullied in middle school and junior high for having a stutter and a lisp. His classmates would also make fun of him because he was poor. According to one of his former friends, he would get bullied by a lot of people on social media, in gaming and almost everywhere else. On the other hand, at home he would often argue with his mother as she wanted to kick him out of her house for a very long time. Issues like these at home, school and online would worsen his mental condition and his behavior became increasingly disturbed over the years. He frequently had fistfights with his classmates, occasionally with boxing gloves that he carried around with him. He once repeatedly slashed his own face with knives for fun. He was scheduled to finish high school in the year 2022, but his frequent absences made his graduation unlikely, and he eventually dropped out of school. Salvador loved playing shooting games such as Call of Duty and Fortnite. And personally, I love to play Call of Duty as well. But what I absolutely hate 
from the bottom of my heart is live streaming the abuse and murder of innocent cats and throwing their dead bodies into people's houses. Turns out it was one of Salvador's favorite hobbies, along with shooting people with BB guns and throwing eggs at vehicles. He also posted violent threats online aimed at teenage girls. Salvador worked at a local Wendy's restaurant and had been employed there for at least a year. One of his co-workers said he was occasionally rude to his female co-workers, to whom he sent inappropriate text messages and would intimidate co-workers at his job by asking them, Do you know who I am? His co-workers dubbed him the school shooter and they had their reasons. In 2018, when Salvador was only 14, he was arrested for a plan that he made. The plan was, when he turns 18 in the year 2022, he'll shoot up a school. Later, the law enforcement dropped him from their radar, thinking he was just a kid who was trying to act tough. Three years has passed since he was arrested, and in September 2021, Salvador asked his older sister to buy him a gun but she flat out refused. However, her refusal won't stop the twisted Salvador Ramos from achieving his goals. On the 14th of May 2022, a mass shooting occurred in Buffalo, New York, and 10 people were killed in this attack. It was a time when the whole nation was mourning for the victims. Further debates regarding firearms, social structures and politics followed. Also on this date, a boy named Salvador Ramos messaged his friend on Instagram that read 10 more days. It was clear that he was about to do something, something that he had been planning for a very long time. Two days later, on the 16th of May, Salvador celebrated his 18th birthday. According to US law, he can now legally purchase firearms. And unsurprisingly, he bought two rifles and 1,657 rounds of ammunition. On the 21st, he posted a picture of two rifles on his Instagram account. It is the 24th of May, 2022. Ten days has passed since the horrific shooting at Buffalo, New York. Salvador Rolando Ramos, a resident of Uvalde, Texas, was about to execute his plan. For a very long time, he had been waiting for this day. At the time, Salvador was living with his grandmother. A school named Rob Elementary School was located roughly 700 meters from Salvador's current residence. Historically, Rob was the school for students of Mexican origin. However, before the 1970s, the principal and all of the staff were non-Spanish speakers and were non-Hispanic whites. By May 2022, because of the flight of non-Hispanic white residents, 90% of the school's students were Hispanic or Latino. The school had standards from 2 to 4. In the morning, around 11 a.m., Salvador and his 66-year-old grandmother were having an argument over a phone bill at their home in Uvalde. Salvador shot his grandmother in the face and then stole her Ford pickup truck and drove towards his destiny. He crashed his grandmother's truck into a ditch near Robb Elementary School and exited the vehicle armed with his rifle. Two men from a nearby funeral home heard the crash and went towards the scene. As they arrived, Salvador opened fire at them and luckily, they both survived. While Salvador was outside Rob Elementary School, he began shooting at the classroom windows. Then he entered the school through its west-facing entrance door, which had been shut down by a teacher who had seen him. Unfortunately, the door did not lock. Despite being designed to be locked when shut, after entering the building, 
Salvador walked down two short hallways and then entered classroom 111, which was internally connected to classroom 112. Teacher Irma Garcia attempted to lock the door to the classroom, but Salvador shut the window and forced himself into the classroom. And after that, he said goodnight to Mrs. Garcia before he shot and killed her. As he entered the classroom full of kids, he locked the door and said, You're all gonna die. He then opened fire on the rest of the students and another teacher in the room. While Salvador was conducting a massacre, three Uvalde Police Department officers arrived and entered the school through the same entrance used by Salvador Ramos, followed shortly thereafter by three more UPD officers and one county deputy sheriff. A total of seven officers were at the school by 11.35 am. Salvador had an encounter with the officers and injured two cops in the process. While the shooting took place, multiple students played dead. A responding officer called out, Yell if you need help. A girl in the adjoining classroom said help. Salvador heard the girl, entered the classroom and shot her. Arnuflo Reyes, a male teacher in classroom 111, instructed his students to get under the table and act like you're asleep. Salvador then arrived and shot him. Then he fired indiscriminately around classroom 111. And later on, the shooter unleashed a second round of gunfire at the students. If he didn't get them the first time, he got them the second time. All 11 students in classroom 111 died during the shooting. Arnulfo Reyes was still alive and pretended to be unconscious on the floor but Salvador then shot him again. Miraculously, he survived and recalled that he heard law enforcement approach his classroom from what sounded like the hallway three times, but they did not enter. While Salvador was shooting up innocent little kids, 19 heavily armed police officers were on the other side. The desperate parents pleaded with the officers to enter the building. When they did not, parents offered to enter the building themselves. The officers held back and tackled parents who tried to enter the school. The police further warned that they would use tasers if the parents did not comply with the directions. A mother of two students at the school was placed in handcuffs by the officers for attempting to enter the school. When released from the handcuffs, she jumped the fence and retrieved her children, exiting before the police entered. A video clip showed parents questioning why police were not trying to save their children, to which an officer replies, because I am trying to deal with you. Some police officers were reported to have entered the school early to retrieve their own children, while other parents were blocked from entering. Salvador Ramos stayed in the classroom for about an hour, hiding behind a steel door that officers were unable to open until they obtained a master key from the janitor. A tactical team entered the room after the door was unlocked. Salvador opened fire at the group from a closet in the room. But this time, the officials returned fire and killed Salvador. 19 children and 2 teachers lost their lives and 18 others were injured. Salvador's grandmother miraculously survived, although she might never talk again because of her injuries. This event will undoubtedly go down as the worst mass shooting of the year 2022 and one of the worst of the 21st century. I had hoped when I became president I would not have to do this again. Another massacre. Uvalde, Texas, an elementary school, beautiful, innocent, second, third, fourth graders, 
and how many scores of little children who witness what happened see their friends die as if they're on a battlefield, for God's sake. <clears throat> They'll live with it the rest of their lives. Every mass shooting in the US is like a cycle. Well, it starts with thoughts and prayers, followed by debates and politics. And after all of that, nothing gets done and another mass shooting takes place and the cycle continues. I am not a politician. And I'll be honest, I don't have a lot of knowledge regarding gun laws in the US. But there is one thing that I personally find bizarre. And that is, Salvador had a lot of red flags. His plan to shoot up a school was never a secret. And other than that, killing cats and all? I mean hell. The bio under his TikTok profile picture reads, Kids be scared IRL. So yeah, I'm baffled how all the signs were ignored. Personally, I don't have any sympathy for Salvador. But this case points out that we need to treat others with some basic humanity and dignity. Mental illness is not isolated to the US, nor is the US an outliner in the frequency of mental illness compared to other developed nations. But school shootings are uniquely American. The difference between the US and other developed nations? Well, the first thing that comes to my mind is regulation. Gun regulation. But that's me. That's my opinion. I would love to know what your opinion is in the comment section. And if you find true crime content fascinating, you can subscribe to this channel and ring the bell so you never miss a new video. But before you leave, I don't want us to remember these victims as merely numbers. Each and every single one of them were individuals who had families and loved ones. And each and every one of them had names. Thank you.